What's up guys? Welcome to The Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell, and today we will be going over an absolutely beautiful game played between Adolf Anderson and Don Dufresne in the year of 1852. This is actually one of the most famous chess games of all time, and even nearly 170 years later, players marvel at the brilliancy that Anderson displayed. This is commonly referred to as the Evergreen Game, and I think you'll find it both entertaining and instructional to watch. I definitely did. Needless to say, it was a game ahead of its time, and it's one of the most exciting finishes I've ever seen. So let's just hop right in. Anderson here was playing with the white pieces. We see e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c5, here Anderson going for the Italian game. We see bishop c5 and b4, the Evans gambit. Here white gives up a pawn and in return looks to get an advantage in initiative and development. We see bishop takes b4, c3, kicking the bishop back to a5, d4, giving up another pawn. And after e takes d4, here in this position, white could take the pawn back with the knight, but Anderson doesn't bother. He plays castles. Here white has given up two pawns, but as you can see, has a huge advantage in development here. Black here played the move d3, giving one of the pawns back. I think either queen takes d3 or bishop takes d3 are okay. Both moves work, but here Anderson finds the very nice move, queen b3. He doesn't even bother taking the pawn back. The truth is here, this pawn on d3 is extremely weak and black can't defend it so white can take the pawn back whenever he likes. And in this position, the most important thing, and Anderson realizes this, is to take advantage of the initiative that has been earned and continue to mount pressure on this pawn on f7. So here with this queen and bishop threatening to take this pawn on f7, we see queen f6 defending it. And now e5, a very nice move attacking the queen. I'd like to note that knight takes e5 does not work because of the very nice move rook e1. Here we see that the knight and the rook are threatening to take this knight on e5. And the only move to defend the knight is d6. But the problem with d6 is that queen b5 check is available for white here. This queen checks the king and is about to take the bishop hanging on a5. So after e5, we see queen g6 continuing to defend this pawn on f7. And here we see rook e1, a nice move, aiming the rook towards the king. We see knight g7 and bishop a3. Now I think in this position it's crucial that black castles. This king is very weak, very vulnerable on e8, and black needs to continue to develop with castling here. However, here in this position, Black seemed very concerned about the bishop on a3, putting pressure on e7, and the queen and bishop on b3 and c4, putting pressure on f7. And here played the somewhat dubious move, b5. Now this does distract the queen from the f7 square with queen takes b5, but we see after rook b8 and queen a4, white has a very nice position and here in this position, black can't even castle. We see in this position that we have a queen attacking on a5 and a bishop attacking e7 and one piece defending both, right? So bishop takes e7 is the best move here. And after knight takes e7, queen takes a5 and here whites up a piece. So needless to say in this position, black can't castle and instead plays bishop b6 we see knight bd2. Again, I think black needs to castle here, but bishop b7 is played. We see knight e4, queen f5, and now Anderson takes the pawn back on d3. Here we see that the bishop has potential discovery on the queen on f5, as this knight can come to either d6 or f6, check the king, and take the queen off the board. So here the queen has to get out of the line of fire with the move queen h5. And here Anderson finds a very nice move, knight f6 check, giving up a piece. 
However, we see after G takes F6 and E takes F6, the amount of pressure on the knight on E7 is absurd. We see rook G8. Here, black is trying to create some counterplay in the position, right? And it appears as if black is threatening to take this knight on F3, right? Because of the pin that has just been created on the king on G1. But Anderson doesn't seem too concerned about the knight on F3, but instead just plays rook AD1. Here, black played queen takes F3. I do think queen H3 is the best move here. But queen takes F3 was played, and here Anderson finds the somewhat crazy looking move, rook takes E7 check, taking the knight off the board, aggressively going after the king on E8. We see knight takes E7, and here it appears, at first sight at least, that white is in huge trouble with the amount of pressure. The queen on F3, both bishops, and the rook on G8 are putting on G2 and F2. It appears as if white is losing this game, and there's only one move here that works for white. In fact, here white has a mate in four. Pause the video if you like, and try to see if you can find it. Okay, and the move is queen takes d7 check. A beautiful move, taking the pawn off the board. Here king takes d7 is forced. And now the very nice move, bishop f5. Here, this is the double check. With both the bishop on f5 and the rook on e8, attacking the king. Now in double checks, the king has to run, right? You cannot block one of the pieces because the other piece is still checking the king. So here in this position, black has two moves, king c6 and king e8. King e8 was played, but if king c6, we have the very nice bishop d7 checkmate and the game's over. Now back to this position, king e8 was played, and now the very nice move Bishop d7 check. Now here, if king d8, we have two ways to checkmate here. We could take with either the pawn or the bishop, and the game would be over. However, here, black played king f8, and bishop takes e7, ended the game with checkmate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I always find it fun to review, and chess was more of a mystery back in the 1800s, right? Opening theory wasn't super developed yet, and it led to a lot of creative and exciting games like this one. Let me know what you guys thought of the game down in the comment section below, and let me know what other games you want to see on this channel. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here, and I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.